Shane Stacks on the radio. Oh, yeah. I love that. Shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Geeky and Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks for tuning in, whether you're listening live over the air on 101.1 FM, The Answer in Little Rock, or listening live on the uh, the Answer's online stream at 101.1 FM, The Answer dot com, or if you're listening by podcast or on YouTube or Krypton Radio or any other ways you're listening delayed after the live show. I'm just glad you're here. We're also um, doing. Uh, we're on the on on the Facebook. We're on Facebook now. Dave Ellswick, go to the Dave Ellswick Show page on Facebook, and uh, he live streams out of his studio with video. So since I broadcast out of uh, that studio on the weekends, we do the same thing. But you have to go to the Dave Ellswick Show homepage on Facebook because that's how it's all set up. So anyway, uh, got a great show today. It is live, so if you want to talk to my guest, you can call 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at ShanePlays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. Again, that's 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at ShanePlays. And my uh, guest today, I'm just going to go ahead and cut right to it. This this is a extremely cool guest to have on for his history with, I'm sure he's a cool guy in his own right. Uh, but for his history in tabletop role playing games, uh, not only what he's done in the past, but what he's doing now with Troll Lord Games are both very interesting. And I'm I'm very glad to welcome to Shane Place for the first time, but hopefully not the last. James Ward, uh, James, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me here. You're welcome by the by the magic of the Skypes. So I want to uh, ask you do you do you prefer to go to by James or Jim? Doesn't matter to me, buddy. Doesn't matter to you. Okay, I'm going to call you Sir Jim. How, do, how does that work? <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks again for uh, coming on the show. Really, really glad to have you. And for those that don't know, Jim is the is the the man behind Metamorphosis Alpha, which most historians, RPG historians, hold uh, as the first science fiction RPG published by TSR way back in the day. Now, I'm going to ask you Jim, do you do you happen to know is it the first one published, the first science fiction one? Yes, well that's my belief. It came out in uh, in 1976, just a tad before Traveler. Okay. So you beat Traveler to the punch. We'll talk more about Metamorphosis Alpha. I actually found uh, a couple of months ago, I got a first printing of the first there's a there's a local shop that has expanded into retro games vintage games used games and they had that and i was like oh yeah i want that so i snapped that up really quick and it was in really good condition so in the conceit of meta we'll get more into it the conceit of metamorphosis alpha is it it's like all on one big ship right yes that's correct i call it a dungeon in space. A dungeon in space. And if that doesn't excite your tabletop RPG gamer heart, I don't know what does. So we'll talk more about that. There's also a very cool new Kickstarter that's just launched uh, in conjunction with a uh, role-playing game company that's near and dear to my heart, which is Troll Lord Games. They're actually right here in Little Rock. I've got a great relation- relationship with Troll Lord Games and Steve Chenault and those folks. In fact, I, I owe him... A uh, a duffel full of unmarked Dr. Peppers for putting me in touch with you so quickly for this show because I really wanted to get you on uh, while the Kickstarter was going on to help you guys out and you may or may not may or may not know that 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 Steve is a he's a tough man but if you want to get to his heart it's with a Dr. Pepper. Boy, so. that's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I told him I'd give him a uh, a duffel full of unmarked, untraceable Dr. Peppers if he could make this happen. So thanks, Steve. That, you know? <laughs> what was that? You're going to have to do that. I know. know. I don't mind. I like those guys. Um, but uh, Steve, if you're listening, uh, thanks so much. And, you know, I hope that for both your sake and Jim's sake that the this Kickstarter is going well. And it's, it's Starship Warden, uh, which is... 
it's it's a uh, it's it's kind of a continuation of Metamorphosis Alpha. Is that I mean, uh, really quick? Why don't you tell us the Kickstarter is going on right now, Jim? And after this, I want to get it a little bit more in your history with RPG design and development, and and you know just w- what your passion with metamorphosis when metam- metamorphosis metamorphosis alpha is uh and all of that but r- real quick can you tell us about starship warden all right so first of all the kickstarter started two days ago and it broke all records for first day sales i'm very proud are you serious fantastic i, d- I wasn't aware of that so congratulations yes i'm really pleased so the starship warden um the product that we're doing in the Kickstarter has 18 different mapped out levels and 16 different mapped out sub levels between the levels. And it's filled with creatures and mutants and new technology. And basically what happened was um, mankind went to the stars. They built this big starship that was 50 miles long and 20 miles wide and, and seven miles tall. And they packed it with, with colonists and animals and plants, and they sent it out to the stars. But the bad thing happened. It was going to be a 20-year mission, but it in five years it went through an unknown radiation cloud, and the radiation screwed up everything on the ship. All of the artificial intelligences went insane. The ship went off course, and for 300 years it's been blasting out in space not on course. And so you play characters on the ship, either mutants or humans or robots, and you're trying to get the ship back on course. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, okay, so in, in, in case people don't know, uh, a generation ship is is this concept, in, and it may not be sci-fi, it may be real one of these days, where uh, the ship is designed for long-term uh, space travel and generations of people live and die on the ship. So it's, uh, you know, you, 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 could, you could tell tales for f- over 500 years or something on, on, a, on a generation ship, uh, you know, and then and, and there's, there's different uses or whatever for them. So, uh, but that's kind of the concept here is that it's a generation ship Thing, uh, they hit a radiation cloud, and they have to go dun-dun-dun-dun. They hit the radiation cloud, and then everything went sideways and pear-shaped. That's right. That sounds cool. Well, uh, and, and I'm looking now. Uh, yeah, it definitely, <laughs> it's doing extremely well. The goal was 7,000 uh, just to, you know, for the basic re- minimum requirements to get the uh, the show, or not the show, the uh the Kickstarter to go to make this product, and then it's already raised almost forty two thousand dollars with uh, with four hundred and eighty six backers. So I think it's to, I think it's safe to say that Starship Warden is a go. <laughs> yeah. So and the cool part is it's it hit all of its stretch goals. So poor Steve has to think up some new stretch goals, and uh, it's it's still got like twenty six days to go. That is that is crazy. Uh, yeah, so it says the Starship Warden is a sandbox adventure setting written by James M. Ward mm-hmm. and Christopher Clark. It is intended for use with the Star Siege RPG, uh, which is a Siege Engine game now that's free with this Kickstarter. Now, if people don't know, the Siege Engine is the basic game engine that powers most of Troll Lord Games uh, products. Uh, they, they are doing some stuff in 5e, but their core product or core game engine uh is the sage engine or i always say sage is the siege engine and it 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 was what they came up with and developed for their castles and crusades game system which was a lot of people can point to and say this helped kick off the entire osr movement it was it, it, it predated a lot of other uh old school games retro clones whatever you want to call them and so uh, the Sage Engine also gets applied to games like uh, Victorious and uh, Amazing Adventures. And now it seems like they have a uh, science fiction version of it called Star Sage. Uh, and, and it's a very, I mean, it's an attribute-based system. It's anybody who's played D&D, very familiar with it. Uh, it it's, it's very cool. And that's what's going to uh, 
power this. Uh, another thing, and I, I hate to steal just a little bit of your thunder here, Joan, but I, but I want to uh, point out the Kickstarter says, if you are loyal to the old Metamorphosis Alpha, don't despair. The, sh- the Starship Warden is written to allow you to use your original Metamorphosis Alpha rules and begin a, life- begin a lifetime worth of play. And the Starship Warden will be a 650-plus page black-and-white hardcover book that will retail for $74.99. Uh, and the digital version of the book will retail at $20. But you can get it much... Uh, you can get it uh, cheaper at, uh, at the uh, Kickstarter with, with, with stretch goals. So, uh, you know, and I'm not committing Steve to anything, but the way you guys are blowing through stretch stretch goals and raising money i mean it's possible maybe he can do some color but i am not i'm not committing him or you to that i'm just thinking out loud so um anyway so after stealing some of your thunder is there anything else you'd like to say about the kickstarter or starship warden no i'm done okay (laughs) so so it's it's uh the one nice thing about it is i've been playing this game for 43 years Uh uh-huh and it's it's been on sale in various mediums. Um, Goodman Games sells lots of Metamorphosis Alpha product plus the original rules, and you can get the original rules on a, a PDF for like six bucks online. So that's super cheap. So uh, it's just something I've been supporting forever, and it's it's turned out really good. And this the Starship Warden book, this six hundred and some page book. Is going to be like my masterpiece. This this is your crowning achievement. All right. Well, we're going to talk more about uh, your history in game design and your uh, you know how Metamorphosis Alpha even happened and how Starship Warden is happening now. And 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 I know there's been many iterations of Metamorphosis Alpha. It's uh, it's 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 one of the earliest uh, RPGs and it's it's had staying power. Uh, one thing I like to do during my show is I, I like to I like to banter with my producer Zach if I can get his attention because see Jim we have here's the thing we uh, the head of our news team Sal his grandmother now it's not Sal but his grandmother and her dog Muffin they get upset with me if I don't banter with Zach so I got <laughs> I got a banter with Zach uh, and you're welcome to jump in on this Zach what's going on man I'm doing fantastic is Mr J still around did he take off he's okay here. well we're gonna I want to go ahead and get to the the uh, banter segment so that we can keep the muffin factor chilled out. So I actually, I got, I got a communication from muffin via our go between um, the mobley detective agency and muffin. This isn't me. Muffin is calling for Mandalorian discussion. So have you seen it yet? Not yet. See, you're disappointing muffin. I'm a slow You're not disappointing. You're disappointing muffin. I am because I am a slow. I'm just saying it's not me. I can't. I can I mean, I'll try to do what I can. The to, frenzy is. It's hot right now. But it's good. It's good. But next week is The Witcher, and that's what all. My, yeah, my, my The focus. Witcher. We'll be talking about. Yeah, The Witcher comes out December twentieth on Netflix, starring Superman himself, Henry. Is it Cavill or Cavell? How do Cavill. You say? Cavill. Okay. So here's here's the main thing. We got the show out of the blue. I'm minding my own business, and 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 Shane plays got a shout out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little bit of that. And you got a shout out too, so but the mystery deepens. That I, I found the plot thickened uh, when I came in today, so we'll talk a little bit about that too. But this is this is uh, a pod. It's 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 not just a podcast. It's sort of a social media uh, venture that aggregates news stories that people think are important, and then they have a uh, they have a weekly podcast wrap up. It's called This Is the Conversation. And the December 7th conversation, I'm minding my own business and and, and play that clip from the December 7th. Week here on the weekly wrap up show with Jay Cliven Payne. This is for the week ending December the 7th, 2019. Shane Plays is a multimedia uh, extravaganza and enigma. It's an actual radio show heard in Little Rock on 101.1 The Answer. It's also heard on the streaming service as well. It is a podcast. It is streaming live, uh, or I guess always live, on Krypton Radio a few days after it's recorded. It is put all over the place on YouTube as well. Shane Plays is a multimedia extravaganza 
and an enigma. It's about a man named Shane who plays various games, video games, role-playing games. He's in the comic books. Any type of geekdom or pop culture thing, he is all over it. And he spends an hour on the radio every single week talking to some people you've probably never thought you really needed to know, but some people who are really in the know. He's talked to comic book writers and artists, talked to actual authors of real-time books that talk about pop culture and comic books and sci-fi as well. He's talked to real old-school tabletop game makers, people making tabletop games these days. He's talked to video game makers. He has all the beads on games and fun stuff and, of course, pop culture as well. He has a news segment that goes over some of the crazy news of the week. And his producer, Zach, well, you got to give extra props to Zach for keeping up with Shane as Shane plays goes along. He, As we say, every week he broadcasts this live as a radio show and it gets replayed all over the place. The best place to find him, of course, at his website, ShanePlays.com. ShanePlays.com. All the links to all the things you need to know, including maybe a few things you don't need to know, and his bad jokes. Yes, there's a bad joke every week, and you can keep up with those at Shane Plays. We put a spotlight on podcasters doing their podcast thing, and this week we put a spotlight on a guy that I like a lot. His name is Shane. He plays games. That why, that why, that's why his podcast is called Shane Plays, and it is our spotlight podcast for the week. That was that was nice. You got a shout out too, Zach. Yeah. So anyway, I was I was already like, this is cool. I played it for my wife, and she goes, "That's obviously somebody that listens to your show." You know, because sometimes people give you shout out just because they want social media love or something, and but they don't really listen to the show or whatever, or they'll say, "Hey, I listen to the show," but they don't, and that's fine. That's just how life works. But Jay from this is the conversation obviously listens to the show. Then the plot thickened today, and Jay is Big Bad John. John, Jay, what up, man? Jay Payne, who uh, helps run uh, stuff up here at the studio. So, uh, man, I just want to give a shout out to Jay, a.k.a. John, and uh, just say thank you for, yeah, go ahead and sit in, man. Uh, That was very nice of you. And if you want to give people a quick uh, elevator pitch on this is the conversation, feel Not free. A Not bum yeah. rushing show or anything, but um, it was just because um, I've heard your show since yeah. I came over here. Uh, I've heard in bits and pieces here right. and there. Uh, it was something that was a short ant version of how it became. When I was producing at another station, I was working things and getting everything's going on, but working across the glass from a guy doing the morning show and thinking, I'd like to do something like this, but I don't have a script. So I put people to work on social media and let them make the script. So uh, right, right now we put the website or we put the, the stories every 50 minutes or so on Facebook and Twitter and people just engage with them. And then Friday morning, I aggregate them, put them up. And Based we on the engagement, on you the do engagement. the top stories Go from, and then mm-hmm. the bottom stories, people that didn't like or right. whatever. Okay. And it's called This is the Conversation. Yes. So I'll link it in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast or Krypton Radio version of the show. I will link this is the conversation. So thank you very much. Oh that, man, you was, have a great show and like I've enjoyed especially two weeks ago when I got yeah. a chance to actually work on right. it. Just so happened I had an open slot for who to promote. So right. why not promote what man, I just did? It was I, very perfect. I really appreciate it. And uh I'm a little worried your your voice is so great that it's gonna work because muffins always want to hear from Zach. Now somebody else is out there is gonna start demanding you on every show and which is fine got a great voice well not a problem yeah I, i'm always available if so if someone wants to hear me i'll find a way to be heard okay great well thanks again man i really appreciate it and uh, i hope that you know this is the conversation it's a nice concept and i hope it keeps working for you so all right back to if i can keep from uh choking on i don't even know what i'm choking on i'm all verklempt i'm verklempt from the love all right jim thanks for uh waiting i always like to banter with zach there are people that love Zach, and, I, and and it gives me an opportunity to talk about different stuff that may not be the main topic. But I, I do want to get back to you. I, I appreciate so much you coming on the show. And if you don't mind, I'd like to walk down memory lane a little bit and just ask, you know, how did you get into RPGs and how did you come to make Metamorphosis Alpha? Okay, that's kind of a fun little story. Yeah. The time is 1974. I just graduated from college with a teaching degree. And every Tuesday, I went over to the Lake Geneva News Agency because they were a bookstore and they would get new fantasy and science fiction books on Tuesdays. So I'm in there and I'm picking up a Conan book and I'm picking up an Andrea Norton book. And I'm going down the aisles looking at the books. 
and I turn to my left, no, I turn to my right, and right beside me is this biker dude. He's got a blue jean jacket. He's got a, one of those great big chain wallets that are so funny. And uh, and he has the exact seven books in his hand that I have. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. We thought that was kind of funny. We started talking about the various authors and what we liked about them. And he said that he had a game where I could play Conan the Barbarian and fight Seth. And, and at and, that moment, your whole life went, no. Right, my whole life changed right at that moment. I was hooked, line and sinker. I went over to Gary's house the next week, and he started teaching me how to play D and D, uh, and it was great fun. I just loved the game, but I was always a big science fiction fan. So about two months later, I said to Gary, "Gary, you absolutely have to do a science fiction version of this game. It needs it bad." And he said to me. Jim, I don't have time to write those rules. Why don't you give it a try? And it was so cool because he had no idea what kind of writer I was or how creative I was. But boy, I took that I took that and ran with it. And Metamorphosis Alpha happened in 1976. That is really cool. Now, who was it? I'm assuming that the biker guy wasn't Gary. Who? who no, no. Yeah. It was it was Gary guy. guy. It was Gary. I've never yeah. okay. I never. I didn't know he ever went through a biker phase. So I don't think he rode a bike, but he looked just. But like he, a he bike. looked like a bike. So you, you that is amazing. So you just by chance bumped in to Gary Gygax at the bookstore, at the college bookstore, university bookstore, because y'all both knew that the new science fiction and fantasy stuff came out on Tuesdays. So yeah. you basically, and you look down, and you have the same seven books. And same seven books i'll never forget that so and it, it see that's see people that that's how people connected before the internet you would actually you would you would have to observe people in their natural habitats now uh do you happen to remember which, which any of those seven books were you know everybody asked me that yeah. and i don't remember a single <laughs> one. i just i was positive that there was an eld spread to camp cohen book uh-huh. and i was if there was an Andrea Norton book, but I don't know what the other ones were. Well, I would say, yeah, there's pretty high chance there was either some Conan or Sword and Sorcery in there. If he went, you know, uh, yeah. if you would like to be Conan and climb the Tower of the Elephant. So, but, I know. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So cool. And then his, 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 his Greyhawk Castle was just an amazing place to play in. I bet I've been in a couple hundred dungeons since then. And Gary's game has always been the best. That's all. That's the one that you compare to. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so you you play D anD D. You ha- you love D anD D, but you wanted a a science fiction role playing game. And Gary basically said, "Well, I can't write it, but if you want one, you write it." Basically, yeah. and you did. So, I, how how much like of your original draft or original concept for the rules? made it into the final product was there a heavy editing process or was was gary and company like that looks great you know in the that's the very earliest day of role playing and um there wasn't a science fiction game out out there before this and it, it had very little editing i would say 90 percent of it was was just what i wrote up okay well, that's that's pretty cool. So it got out there. Uh, like I said, I actually, I'm. It's it's one of. The, I've started collecting RPGs either based on my own nostalgia from you know growing up in the '70s or '80s, or games that I feel are important to the history of RPGs, either because they were the first of something or because of mechanics. And so having that that first printing of Metamorphosis Alpha is is is, is one of my you know, crown pieces I have in my collection right now. And it's, you know, I, I just love looking through that stuff. There's a, uh, you know, games today, you know, the industry has, you know, grown and refined and whatever for 40 years. So you got all this amazing art and layout and everything, but there's an earnestness and an energy and, uh, you know, fun uh, to, to looking at those, those original rules you know because it, it was it was like very much by gamers for gamers 
before the industry even really existed at that point. So I just, I absolutely love looking through that stuff. So were there any, you know, you can like a game, but still want to try different mechanics. So I know that, I know that you had attributes that we called characteristics. Uh, and then you had, you know, combat rules that were somewhat similar to the original D and D. Were there any mechanics that you're like, I really want to try this out. Or like, we don't do this in D&D, but I want to see how this would work in a game or anything like that you tried to work in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the mutations, the, the radiation mutates bodies effect. I was, I was a big Superman comic book fan, and the different colors of kryptonite all right. and how they the Superman were always fun to me. So I did the exact same thing with mutations, so that you would walk into a, a mutated area and if you didn't die, your character mutated and gained gained a mental or a physical power. And those, I think, those are what keep people interested because it's fun. It, you know, it's fun to have superpowers. So uh, that 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 feature has been really good, and that carried over into the first apocalyptic role playing game, Gamma World, mm-hmm. that I wrote a couple of years later. We use the same technique of of mutations. So were you the I know you were the the sole author on Metamorphosis Alpha. Uh, Gamma World is one of the games and franchises out there that I, you know, I'm aware of, but I've never actually played myself. Uh, were, were you also sort of a sole creator on Gamma World? What you know, how uh, how did that happen? They they wanted well. Again, I, I suggested that we needed a planet based game. And uh, and so they 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 suggested Gary and, and his group suggested that their publisher Jake Jacate work with me and and help me write the game, and so uh, we both uh, dived in and did Gamma World and got that thing out in the very late seventies. Now is it? And I I'm just shooting from the hip here, so it may not be a fair characters or characterization. Is it is it correct to say that? The Gamma World is basically Metamorphosis Alpha, but on a planet? Or did you refine it further? Well, uh, okay, so this is this is where ugly legal things become ah, involved. Okay. I own Metamorphosis Alpha. Hasbro owns Gamma World. So I would never say a statement like Metamorphosis is Gamma World on a planet. Okay, I understand. All right. But but there may be similar characteristics in the gameplay. All right, fair enough. <laughs> it's possible. It's it's within the realm of 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 possibility. Okay, fair enough. All right. So, uh back to Metamorphosis Alpha, which is as you've said, a, it's basically a dungeon in space. You're on a generation ship. Uh you've got there's some similarities to the uh original D and D game mechanics, but there's mutated humans and uh, some other slightly different variations. The radiation that the ship went through, you know, basically has has introduced this very cool different colored kryptonite, uh, you know, mutation scenarios. And it sounds like a heck of a lot of fun. Now, did you intend it originally to just be a big scenario because it's just one big ship, or or did you see it as like something for ongoing campaigns you know did you see it like a, as a mega dungeon but just set in space or was it was it intended to be more than that yeah okay that that's a very good question and again keep in mind the time period there wasn't mega dungeons in those days there wasn't big campaigns in those days right in 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 75 and 76 there was Gary's Greyhawk city and Gary's Greyhawk dungeon and that was it. So uh, I I had envisioned it as as a, a spinoff of of Gary's campaign and and to turn it into something that would be you know playable for a long time. I didn't envision that people could play in it for forty years like they have been. Right. I've it, got I've got friends who have whose characters are still running in the game forty years later. Isn't that amazing? How do how do I gotta know how does that how does that make you feel? I mean, I imagine it makes you feel good, but does it just does it just blow you away? Yeah, I have to tell you, 
the fact that that game has been still in sales and still selling today, 43 years later, is is an extreme bit of pride for me. I I I, I have no doubt for that. That that'd be amazing. So it, it just you know it fascinates me. I I, I had the chance to ask, uh, you know, David Zeb Cook this uh, recently as people were talking about you know the the original days at TSR and, and 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 literally trying to track down and collect memos from that time for the historical record. You know what what did you you were you were there basically at the beginning. You're with Gary. You know you guys are making playing games, making games. It's a new thing. You know role playing games, fantasy role playing games, adventure games. That was there had been war gaming, and you had had Brownstein stuff and you know the the Blackmore stuff. But really, this was the dawn, the genesis. Ground Zero, what, what did you think y'all were doing? I mean, obviously you were having fun, but did you think it was a flash in the pan? Or did you think that, you know, y'all were starting something that would have legs? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Uh, in, in my mind, and of course, it's just from my perspective, it was just a hobby to us. You know, it, it wasn't going to be a full-time job until... Um, until the until 1980 when it hit big 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 so it was just a, a enjoyable pastime much like stamp collecting or uh, or you know collecting baseball cards well I and mean, you know just so you know i'm sure you've heard this before but uh you know i i don't think that it it's hard for me to express the impact that role-playing games had on my imagination and my fun and and just you know the I don't know the the, the things it did for me uh, in my formative years. You know, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, whatever. Uh, I mean, you you guys rock my world with the, all the stuff you were doing. So um, you know, I know for you it was a hobby, and a lot of the, the really big things in life people don't foresee coming. But you know, you guys just having some fun with a hobby. Yup, y'all y'all have literally changed people's lives. You know, that's true. And that you know that's that's a a bit of pride too. I, I hear that a lot from people yeah. that tell me that uh, you know their lives changed when they started role playing, and it makes me very happy. Yeah, it's I mean it's been a huge part of of my way I think, and you know I'll literally think sometimes when I'm thinking about a situation or a person, I'll start breaking it down to like, well, if that person was a character sheet, what would it look like? And that, or if this situation was a scenario, what would the rules be? And that helps me think through situations. You know, it's, it's I don't know. Anyway, kind of kind of boggles my mind. So thank you for being in there at the beginning and contributing to all this. Now, uh, one last question I had for you on Metamorphosis Alpha. We need to get to a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about Starship Warden. Uh, and I want to acknowledge the multiple editions uh, and publishers, et cetera, of Metamorphosis Alpha. It started with TSR. Uh, it's gone through several versions, and then, as you said, uh, Goodman Games helped carry the torch for a while, uh, and now this Kickstarter for uh, Starship Warden is is with Troll Lord Games. So, uh, but the, are the are the existing product with Goodman Games will still be out there, correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. So fantastic. That'll make a lot of people happy. I like the stuff that Goodman does. You know, I was I was just telling somebody recently how much I love their. They have these original adventures reincarnated thing where they it's a big hardback and they'll take like keep on the borderlands or isle of dread or uh expedition of the barrier peaks and they'll reprint they'll reprint multiple versions of the original modules and, and the different revisions and then they'll give a 5e conversion and they have articles and stuff in there on history and perspective on the module and i just love those products so i got to give a shout out to them all right, so I just wanted to ask here real quick, only because I, I'm probably going to track this book down. Uh, according to Wikipedia, which may or may not be true, uh, I guess you've said the original inspiration for the game was it was a book uh, from Brian Aldiss uh, yeah. ca- called Nonstop, also known as Starship. Starship is the version you're going to want. The okay. Nonstop one is it's much, much older. It's the same book, but it got retitled. But Starship is pretty easy to get, and it won't cost you three hundred dollars. I got you. Okay, and I, I assume that's about a generation ship. 
Yes. Okay. Nonstop. Yeah, it would, it would indicate that. Just going to keep on going. All right. Well, we're going to get to a break. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the uh, Starship Warden, which is it's Metamorphosis Alpha uh, using the Star Sage engine, uh, and, which is in Kickstarter right now. And it's it's going kind of berserker. So it's it's nonstop. Speaking of nonstop, uh, folks, wanted to, wanted to tell you real quick, uh, and then we'll get to a break. Let me get my show notes open here. The, uh, my book with Matt Barton, uh, we're both co-authors on it, and it's uh, Dungeons and Desktops: The History of Computer Role Playing Games, Second Edition. CRC Press, which is the publisher, is having an end of year sale right now. You can get twenty percent off the book. And uh, includes free shipping, so that's currently cheaper than Amazon. So go to CRC Press and look for Dungeons and Desktops, The History of Computer Role-Playing Games, second edition. All right, uh, Zach, get us to break. When we come back, we're going to talk with more with Jim Ward, the creator of Metamorphosis Alpha, also uh, a uh, creator on Gamma World. And we're going to be talking about a, a new iteration of Metamorphosis Alpha uh, called Starship Warden when we come back on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Are you a fan of thrilling adventure, daring suspense, and just a touch of romance? Cursova has you covered. Since 2016, Cursova has been publishing the very best in contemporary fantasy and science fiction, retro pulp, and for you D&D gamers, Appendix N style fiction. Based in Little Rock, you can pick up their flagship magazine locally or at Michael Tierney's The Comic Book Store on Treasure Hill Road or Collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock. Swing by one of Michael's stores and pick up an issue or find them on Amazon. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. It doesn't start with a K. It starts with a C. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. Cursova Magazine. Check them out today. I want to go ahead and throw out some love to Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40k, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located 1121 South Bowman, Right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. And folks, if you do visit any of my sponsors, please tell them that you hear about them on the show. That helps them know uh, that their advertising money and the relationship we've built is, is time and money well spent. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Shane Stacks on the radio. Oh, yeah. I love that. Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. Uh, we're talking with Jim Warden, or Jim Ward, Warden. Hold on. I was looking at the Starship Warden webpage, so let me back up for a second. We're talking with James Ward, a.k.a. Jim Ward, who is the creator of 
Metamorphosis Alpha, which is acknowledged as the first uh, science fiction tabletop role playing game. And it has endured from the uh, mid 70s to today. And the newest iteration, uh, expression, if you will, of Metamorphosis Alpha is a Kickstarter that's going on right now. It's already just blowing the, the roof off. Uh, uh, Jim mentioned that it, it has broken some records. It's called The Starship Warden. And it is a, uh, it's basically Metamorphosis Alpha running on the Star Sage engine, and it's already raised Buku, $42,000 almost on a $7,000 goal, and it's it's only went two days ago. So you need to get on over there and check that out. Uh, before we get back to talking with Jim about the Starship Warden and Metamorphosis Alpha, I want to throw out a couple of quick show notes. One, if you're listening to uh, the show by podcast or on Krypton Radio or on YouTube or something like that, then uh, the show notes will be up at shameplays.com. That's S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S.com. Last week's show is out, and that's when we had episode 204, which was Scald Against the Black Priory Retro CRPG with developer Al from Norway. That was a fun show, so check that out. show does go out as a podcast after the live show on the blog, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Podbean, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more, and last but never least, Shane Plays is carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi, kryptonradio.com. All right, back to Jim. Jim, I, I wanted to uh, kind of focus in on the Starship Warden for the rest of the show. We've only got, we got about 10 minutes left, something, something along those lines. But I did want to ask, I always try to give my guests an opportunity to... You know, is there something you never get asked that you want, you know, you want to get out there or that, you know, you wanted to make sure to mention today? I wanted to give you an opportunity if there, you know, if there's something like that, because some of my guests, you know, I, I talk to them and they're like, man, I always want somebody to ask me this and they never do. So this is your opportunity. OK, that's fair. So M.A. was the first science fiction role playing game. OK, M was the first apocalyptic role-playing game and I just finished a set of rules called Giant Lands and that's the first apocalyptic fantasy role-playing game. So I, I'm doing lots of new designs. I always like doing fun new stuff. Um, a year ago I did a thing called Forgotten Ruins with uh, with Nick Cole and Jason uh, Anzuk that's uh that's another fantasy set of rules so i i keep real busy sounds like it so when can we expect uh to see something with the giant lands out there oh, that's a good question yeah. giant lands, um just finished a kickstarter i'm really proud to say we did very well and uh and so he's planning on printing all that up this month and having them available for sale um next month or, or early february and so what is the, uh, so describe what is a apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic fantasy? I mean, what, so it's like yeah. a medieval high fantasy world. That, yeah. Sure. Yeah. What happens is this, um, Gaia, the goddess of nature, she wakes up and she sees how bad man has polluted the earth. So she destroys mankind's civilization and she wakes up the giants and the titans that she had previously put to sleep, and a great big starship that was being um, built up in the sky crashes on the planet. So basically, we've got giants and titans and the magic of ley lines, and we've got crashed starships and mutants, and they all work together on the world. And the objective for the players is, is very ecological. It's to clean up the mess that mankind made. So when there's desert, you're supposed to give it water. And when, and when there's polluted swamps, you're supposed to take out the pollution. And that's all done in a in a fantasy background with dragons and and uh, different character races. So it's it's a fun new game that uh, I'm really looking forward to. Um, we've already expanded with an adventure, and uh, and I just I just like to keep busy. I'm working on three different other projects right now too. 
That sounds really cool. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, you're definitely staying busy. So uh, back to Metamorphosis Alpha and the Starship Warden. So here is some more information from the Starship Warden Kickstarter page. It says the Starship Warden is a project long in the works. Originally, the Starship appeared in James M. Ward's Metamorphosis Alpha RPG, which is you know what we've been talking about, published in the bygone days. I, one might almost say, is it Halcyon? Halicon, however you say that. Appear- Halcyon days, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's one of my favorite words, actually. Well, there you go. It's the Halcyon days of the 1970s. It has seen many iterations since then, appearing in countless books and pubs. However, it has never been presented fully fleshed out as its creator, James Ward, envisioned it. Now, for the first time, decades after its creation, the Starship Warden comes to life in all its 17 levels and as its master architect designed it. So if I'm reading this right, this is the first time that the the full ship as intended, the dungeon in space, as you put it, is being published. Okay, so in the first set of rules, I, I drew up by hand 17 levels. And they're very crude, and they're little egg-shaped maps in the rule book. But my good friend Chris Clark did an amazing job transmutation, transmuting those levels into great big full-size paper maps with hundreds of encounters on them. So we've gone from from Mickey Mouse the cartoon to Snow White the the, the right. anime. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. In our production. So you, you've gone from a short to a to a feature-length film. Uh, yes, exactly. That, that's great. So, uh, is it is it fair to describe this as uh, like a huge and 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 I don't mean this is good. I like this kind of thing. Uh, is it you're talking about all these encounters on every? Is it is it like just a huge dungeon crawl that's a spaceship crawl, or is there you know or, or like what kind of? And obviously, any group can bring any kind of gameplay that they want. To a, to a game, but like, well, how is it intended? Is it intended to be a, you know, let's clear every area and, and solve puzzles and fight monsters, or is there an overarching sort of narrative thing going on? Okay, that's fair. The, the overarching thing is to get the ship back on track. Okay. And, and in the beginning of playing the game, you don't even know you're on a ship. You know, you're on a level that's 50 miles long and 20 miles wide. You think that's the whole world. Oh, wow. So okay. It's going to be a big revelation during the course of the game. And uh, and basically, it's 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 a science fiction version of a dungeon crawl because there's so many encounters and so many puzzles to solve. And, and they're all very doable. I mean, I've... I've Play tested this thing for over 40 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it is kind of a lethal world, but like Gary played the game, and he only died once the entire time. So uh, his character, I mean, only right. died once. Right, 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 right. Huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's it's just a, a voyage of exploration inside a huge ship. So you, you slowly come to realize that you're actually living on a spaceship, and that something's gone terribly, horribly wrong, and eventually you're you're going to try to, I guess, what fight your way to a computer or control room. I don't I don't want to know actually. I don't want to spoil it for people, but yeah, I'm just kind of okay. Yeah. On the tenth level of the ship, there's the command bridge, and uh, and the command bridge was designed with with security protocols in mind. So if you're not in, if you're not in an armored spacesuit with a ton of weapons and maybe a couple robots in front of you, you're not getting to the right the, and the command chair. So do you have any um, future plan? I mean, obviously, you you know, you, this is this game, this setting has been going for 40 years with no stopping. Uh, again, no pun intended with the don't stop or whatever the, the name of that novel is. Uh, that's you said starships, the, the good version to get. Do you have any plans for, like after they get things back on track and get to a planet or something? I mean, how far do you plan to extend this universe? Yeah. 
Yeah, just between you and me and nobody else. Nobody else. I want to do a metamorphosis alpha planet. Cool. And it's it's uh and and hopefully so uh we've got to wrap here in a couple of minutes, but I did want to ask what are some of the cooler mutations that you like? Oh, my favorite one is life leech, of course. It it absorbs six hit, hit points from everybody within twenty feet of the mutant. Nice. That's I just love it. <laughs> the good ones. Radiated eyes is a lot of fun uh-huh. because if if it doesn't kill you, oftentimes it mutates you. Uh-huh. <laughs> if, if you're a human, you don't want to be mutated because while you're a human, robots will obey your orders. But the second you become a mutant, robots don't obey your orders anymore. Well, that's fun. All right. So last question before we got to wrap. How did uh, and I know this is a big question to compress down into just a couple of minutes. But how did uh, you end up connecting with uh, Trollord Games and Stephen Chenault and those folks to do this Under the Star um, Siege? Well, okay, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Basically, a long, long time ago, Steve really liked uh, the hardbound book Deities and Demigods. Mm -hmm. The AD&D hardbound book, are you familiar with that? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so he wanted a book like that. So he called me up and said, Jim... I would like you to do a book called Of Gods and Monsters. That's pantheons, just like the Deities and Demigods book, but with C&C stats. Okay. And so I turned it in early, which he says he never gets products turned in early by any designer. And uh, it, the role-playing elements, I really pumped up the role-playing elements in it, so it made it kind of exciting. And that became one of their best-selling products in the history of the company. Nice, and then and then of course there was the huge kerfluffle with having uh, Lovecraftian Cthulhu mythos stuff. So then y'all had to revive. I'm oh. joking, obviously that was the original deities okay, and demigods. Okay, you're demigod. pressing a really ugly button there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I'll just back away from that. Although I think Lovecraft's in the public domain now. I know there's a lot of stuff going into the public domain. That I got it, so ripped by that. That whole thing was a terrible situation I'm, for me. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened. I got the rights from uh, Moorcock for Elric and uh, Arkham House for Lovecraft. I got those rights. But the the foolish guys in those two companies also signed a role-playing contact, contract with Chaosium. So they naturally said, we own the rights. Oh, we, see, I didn't realize it was that pear-shaped. I, always oh, just, th- I just thought, yeah. So they, they took out the two pantheons in the book, and then... Uh, and then I said, well, I'll be happy to do two pan- two new Pantheons free. Right. And they said, oh, no, we don't want to bother. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, not, sorry to poke that old wound, but it's... Sorry. It, yeah, it's, it's the only really bad thing that ever happened to me in t- at TSR, besides getting fired. Yeah. Was, well, I'm, when, uh, yeah, a lot of... Uh, unfortunately, the you know, the, as things went on, there was some bad stuff at TSR, and, and I hate that people that were there at the beginning doing such amazing things got caught in the middle of all that but i'm glad that you've been able to do all the cool stuff that you have and you know with this stuff in the public domain now uh you know it might be interesting to see what maybe could be done in the future well i like to end jay uh jim thanks so much for being on this i wish i could talk to you longer but radio is radio uh, so we got to draw to a close i always end with a bad joke of the week so uh, I picked this one out just for you, given the different eras that you've worked in. Uh, the past, the present, and the future walk into a bar. It was tense. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. That's, thanks for, that's good. <laughs> all right. Well, I got to wrap us up. Thanks so much, Jim. Everybody else, we'll catch you next time on Shame Place. Earth Ship Ark. Man's greatest and final achievement, out of control, drifting through deep space over 800 years into the far future. Its passengers, descendants of the last survivors of the dead planet Earth, locked in separate worlds, their destination long forgotten, heading for destruction unless three young people can save the Star Lost.
Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. 